Hello everyone. If you surveyed 100 people and asked them what tool did they most associate with being a carpenter, what do you think their answer would be? Would it be a saw, a tape measure, a pencil, or a 54 volt, 190 mil battery powered circular saw? I think we all know that the answer would be the humble hammer. So I'm going to do a really short video today where I talk about the humble hammer. This is uh, the hammer that I use. This is a 20 ounce S-wing hammer. Now, I, I think that uh, the hammer is something that, yes, we've got all these wonderful uh, power tools now, but I really do think it's an integral and very identifiable part of being a carpenter. So I remember my first day as an apprentice sort of rolling up to the, to the place that I was going to work. I had a handful of sort of really cheap uh, tools and I remember specifically that I had an old Stanley Steelmaster hammer and this hammer really identified me as, as a complete new boy trainee apprentice. I mean the fact I had big shiny steel toe cap boots and a, a really brightly coloured uh, brand new leather tool belt was by the by. As soon as I got enough money I was going to buy myself a decent hammer. The hammer that everybody used, the guys that were teaching us, all of my peers so to speak, it was all about having an S-wing hammer. I think when I was first training you could get away with having a cheap pouch, cheap saw, cheap pencil, cheap tape, but when you had an S-wing hammer it made you feel that you were on a path. It made you feel that you were more than just someone who was going to be knocking in nails. It kind of it reflected that you were going to be in the trade because you basically wouldn't buy one of these unless you were in the trade. They were expensive. I think my first one, which I've got here to show you, uh, the first one I bought, look at this. This is really old, one of my oldest tools. I think this was nearly £30, maybe 25 plus fat, something like that. I was only earning £17 a week at the time. So, you know, getting on for two weeks wages. So it was a, it was a big deal buying one of these. But I remember when I bought it, I felt like I'd taken a sort of step up or step closer to becoming a carpenter. S-Wing did a huge range of hammers and I probably just picked this one because it was uh, one of probably only two that were available in the shop that I went into. I think there's a 20 ounce and then I think there was a 22 ounce. But they do a huge range of hammers. I think they do like framing hammers, they do hammers of all different types of weight. They do them that have got a curved claw, straight claw, they do like an English pattern hammer, they do one that's got a leather handle, they do a drywall hammer, they do a brick hammer, they do a club hammer, they do a hatch it. they did so much stuff so when I bought this one or I should say see when I bought this one back in the 80s um, it was probably only one of two that were available in the shop I think probably this was 20 ounce and maybe a 22 ounce um, because obviously uh, the internet hadn't been invented back then so we didn't really have the choice that you have nowadays we came across some shuttering carpenters once and what they used to do is sharpen up the this um, shaft here um, and they would use it to sort of axe through bits of timber so I just think that's they look really lethal and catch your finger and cut it straight off the reason that these s-wing hammers were so popular um, and obviously uh, I should say they're they're an American uh, product and as with a lot of really good carpentry equipment so back in the day and perhaps even today a lot of it did come from uh, America because they seem to be a lot further forward or they seem to do a lot more timber framework than we did here in the UK so you know this was the hammer to have it had a it was like a one piece forged shaft that went all the way down through the handle and then the handle was molded onto it so as you can see with this one over the 20 or 25 years that i had it basically i kind of wore it out um the handle if you look at uh, this handle here you can see that it's uh, this is what this one's probably about five years old this one i've had now replaced it and um, so you can see they they basically wear out with with the uh, you know the amount of use you give them. The other thing that was really interesting with this one, and it kind of reflects the time really, because uh, the hammer did everything. Literally, I put, I mean, I don't even think how many nails I put in with this in terms of, you know, the, the first six kind of nails you had were three inch wires and four inch wire nails, which you just have to smack in with this. But if you look at the, uh, the end there, you can see if I get this newer one, you can see how the end is all sort of uh, worn away here. And, and mostly that is from knocking uh, sort of snots off brickwork, you know, when we were doing floor joists and stuff like that. So that's had a lifetime of just knocking away sort of snots. And then, as you can see, the head's kind of gone a bit misshapen. So, you know, that is a hammer that's done some serious work. And I kind of replaced it because it did really look like it was about, you know, ready to be replaced. 
So as I said, uh, because this had like a, 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 a one piece shaft that went all the way down into the bottom of the handle, it was a very nicely balanced hammer and certainly against the old Stanley Steelmaster, which uh, you know looked like a child's hammer really, um, this was a massive leap forward. Now I'm not quite sure if nowadays the hammers to have are a Martinez or a stiletto hammer, but I'm sure they're absolutely fantastic, but you don't get a lot of change out of 300 quid for that hammer. So I mean, each their own, it's, that's not the kind of money that I would spend on a hammer. Um, if I was gonna spend that kind of money on something that put nails in, I'd wanna just pull a trigger and hear a loud bang. So, you know, I'd be interested to know what people uh, think about those hammers, if they've got them. I mean, maybe I'm missing out on something. Maybe they're like a quantum leap forward in, in hammering. So yeah, I'd be interested to, to know what uh, people think about those, not only you know if you've got one and, and, and what they're like to use, but also you know how long you have to save up to buy one. So just a tiny little video to, to tell you a little bit about my S-Wing Hammer and my sort of journey with uh, you know this brand, particularly obviously I've had two of them now. I think this one will pretty much see me out. I'm in my 50s now, so I, think, uh, I don't think I'll be replacing this one. It's kind of my companion. It's always there on on, on the side of you. You know, I, I wear a tall belt and it's always hanging there and it's a, it's just your friend, you know. It's very reliable and I think um, we'd all be absolutely lost, I think, as carpenters if you didn't have a hammer. And that's why I think it's, it's possibly the most identifiable piece of kit with carpentry. But as always, I'd be really interested to hear any of your thoughts in the comments. Uh, maybe you've got a little story to tell about your hammer, which hammer you use, how long you've used it for, and what difference it made to not only how you did your job, but how it made you feel uh, when you did your job. So as always, uh, thanks for your support and thanks for watching.